Hey, this is Mike with Family Handyman, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my most reached for tools in the garage. That's the circular saw. It's an essential tool for beginner DIYers and professional builders alike, and it's extremely versatile. Today I'm going to talk about what the circular saw can do, types of saws and features to look for, and tips on how to use them safely and effectively. Let's talk about versatility of the circular saw. Now a circular saw can make all sorts of cuts, as long as they're straight. It can make a rip cut down the length of the grain of the wood. It can make a cross cut across the grain. It can make an angle cut and a bevel cut, which is the blade changing positions relative to the base. And it can do a combination called a compound cut, an angle and a bevel in one. It can also cut different types of materials just by swapping the blade. You can cut aluminum or plastic, masonry, bricks and concrete, and even steel. Let's talk about some of the features. When choosing the saw that's just right for you, there's lots of features to consider. First, cutting capacity. That's determined mostly by the size of the blade that the saw can handle. Seven and a quarter is typically what you're gonna find in a circular saw, but there are much smaller versions and much larger versions, up to 16 inch blade sizes. Another nice feature is an electric brake. That's when the blade stops immediately when the trigger is released. That's a really great safety feature. In case you have to set it down quickly, the blade's not spinning. Another feature to look for is a magnesium shoe. Magnesium is lighter and stronger than steel, so it'll bring the weight of your saw down a little bit. A no-catch blade guard is also a good option. That's the blade guard shaped like this right here. It makes sure that the blade guard retracts as you're pushing the saw through your material. Another thing I like to see is a positive bevel stop. It lets you reach common angles in a bevel quickly and easily. So let's talk about the different types of saws. This one is the traditional circular saw, often called a sidewinder. And really, this is what we know in the store to be a circular saw. The blade is on the right-hand side, the motor is on the left-hand side, but you can also get it in a left-hand version with the blade on the left. Next, we've got a trim saw. This is just a smaller version of the sidewinder saw. Really great for people who are on the move and want a lighter saw. Um, typically the blade is on the left, but there are times when you can get the blade on the right. Next up we have a flooring or compact saw. This is great for, like I said, flooring or even cutting sheet goods on a stack. The cutting capacity is much smaller, so you're not going to be able to cut tons of 2x4s, although it can cut a 2 by material. The shape of it is a little bit different. It's got this barrel grip, which makes it really nice to push behind, gives you nice straight cuts, a lot easier. Then we've got the gear-driven saw. Now this one is a worm drive. It's got a narrower shoe and it's a lot longer. And these are very, very powerful because of the way the gears are driven. It uh, makes it a lot easier to cut straight because of the length. Next up, we have a plunge saw. Now, this is a really great saw if you're a fine woodworker or a trim carpenter. Maybe replace a table saw. This thing can cut very precisely and it leaves a really nice clean cut. Um, it's called a plunge saw because it starts with the blade up inside the saw and then you plunge it down into the material. And it works really well with this track system which you can line up with your cut and these two combined leave very clean cuts, the edges smooth, no chips, and it's very precise. Now let's talk about some tips. So first things first is safety. Circular saws are inherently dangerous, so we need to protect ourselves. Safety glasses, number one. Hearing protection is also important. And the other thing you want to make sure is to secure any loose-fitting clothing hoodie drawstrings to make sure nothing gets caught in that blade. So the next thing you want to do is adjust the blade depth. Put the blade next to the material that you're cutting and adjust the saw upward until there's no more than one full tooth sticking below the surface. Tighten it up and you're good to go. So one common mistake I see when people use circular saws is cutting their board while it's in between two sawhorses. Now cutting in the middle, as you make the cut, the 
board will bend because it'll get weaker and it'll pinch the blade, sending the saw in a dangerous kickback. Instead, make sure the cutoff end of your board is unsupported so that it can fall away completely free. So it's important that your saw is set up to cut nice and square. That means that the blade is 90 degrees to the shoe. Now to check that, first unplug your saw, turn it over and retract the blade guard, and use a tri-square pushed up against the blade. Now this one looks pretty good, but if your saw is a little bit off, good news, there is a set screw right here that you can adjust to fix that. So whether you're doing a rip cut or a cross cut, if the material on your saw horses shift in any way, it could be bad news. So make sure you secure it either with clamps or if you've got a wood top on your saw horse with screws or a nail to keep it from shifting and that should keep it in place. So to make perfectly square cuts quickly, use a speed square as a guide. Place it on the keeper side of your board and make sure the saw is also on the keeper side of your board and make your cut. Most circular saws are not big enough to pass through a 4x4 in one pass. So we have to do a few passes with this. Start by making a mark and make your first cut right on the mark. Roll the board back and then you're going to use your cut or the kerf to begin your next cut on the other side. Line up the blade. Then one more roll and one more cut will leave you with a nice clean end. So for materials that have some sort of laminate on top, whether it's a veneer or a melamine like this, you want to prevent scratches and chip out while using a circular saw by covering the top with blue tape. So when cutting on a tabletop or a stack of lumber when you don't want to cut anything on the surface, I always lift the board up with a small prop. That'll give enough room for the blade to pass through the wood and it'll let the high side or the cutoff of your board drop, preventing binding of the blade. And when I'm cutting, I'm always cutting on the high side of the prop. So when cutting sheet goods, I like to use a one inch piece of rigid foam backer. That way the blade can get all the way through the plywood without getting dulled or ruin any work surface. And the piece of plywood you cut off won't go crashing to the ground. There you have a basic rundown of the circular saw. It's a really versatile tool and really should be in every DIYer's toolkit. So for more tool tips like this, head to FamilyHandyman.com.